come to me, says the heart of our Saviour. The Lord broke through the harshness of the dour situation of Jansenist France in the 1600s, indicating that he wanted not so much a religion as a relationship, a friendship. The emphasis on sin had become so great that souls feared and had an awe of the majesty which was, although correct, was out of context and meant that they did not receive the Lord. Holy Communion might have been once a year and he wanted at least once a month and he broke through. Now we have gone to the other extreme and we glibly mishandled the Lord and the panoply of protection that the Church has given us throughout the centuries to shield that Divine Majesty with honour and praise, physical and interiorised. We disobey, we rule over our Lord, we play our own game, but we don't play the game that actually would give us intimacy with Him. Because we can't then pretend to intimacy if we're actually disobeying Him. So we've gone completely in the other direction. And He's become a simple mate. And we actually forget who we are handling and before whom we will stand as our judge. So a good balance is what is needed, not one or the other, but the golden mean. And when that relationship is there, the rest will follow. If it is not, it won't. And that is the problem with much of our abuse in our day, which is the cause right now of much pain to the sacred heart. It is the fruit of absence of engagement with him. We can't serve him without him. It has no sense. The Lord has never ceased to break through. It is a year since he broke through in Italy in a Franciscan convent monastery where the statue of St. Anthony of Padua wept on his feast day, 13th of June. Bishop was informed, it was looked at carefully, and it was recognised for what it was, a genuine miracle, because it started on the vigil and then repeated itself on the day itself, and the bishop was able to see. They were able to take away the samples. It was human secretions of tears. And this was an indication that the saints too suffer. They suffer much. It's strange actually that animals pick up things as well. We have seen an interesting phenomenon right now in China. In more than one place, several places simultaneously over that huge part of the world big fish had been jumping out, jumping out, jumping out of the water as though they were aware that something was wrong. The frontier between this world and the next is perhaps less dense than we think. Recently the blood of St. Gennaro's, St. Januario Gennaro, has again liquefied in Naples. It's as though we handle our God hand to hand in these miracles. In our Catholic faith, we do actually have a lot to do with the supernatural. So much so that almost we get used to it. But there is also a holiness in our attitude to God. That is what actually struck the young John Henry Newman when with his father he had to walk into what is by now, the church, the chapel given over to the Ordinariate in London. It had been for a long time the chapel of the 
Portuguese embassy. And when he came in there, he saw what he'd never seen before with his acting Anglican background. Simple souls kissing statues, manifesting the spontaneous devotion and very much at home with heaven. What he referred to as a holy familiarity with heaven. And he was quite taken aback. But the saints over the centuries have grown into that homeliness. The saint who was feast on the 16th of November, St Gertrude, great mystic, herald of the love of God, and initially, as it were, somebody who was orientated towards the Sacred Heart, embryonically given already as a herald of what would be fully shown through St Margaret Mary a la Coque. And she, in ecstasy, would have very intimate moments with Jesus, her King, her Saviour. She'd given all her life to her in early days. And so great was the intimacy, the homeliness between them, that he would say to her, What shall I sing for thee? And she would suggest some introit, some mass or other, because what was common to them, of course, was the repertoire of Gregorian chant, and he would sing with his beautiful voice to his beloved. We need to retrieve that loving homeliness, as St John the Evangelist was quite at home on the sacred breast in the upper room. He rested there, just as any beloved would. He was happy at home in that sacred atmosphere. And we are invited to do the same. How many of our holy hours are filled with actual shields to intimacy? We must get through our volume of self-imposed vocal prayer. Lord, don't get in the way, don't get in the way, don't interrupt me, I'm praying to you, I'm praying to you. And we don't look at him in the eyes once in our holy hour. We're doing our duty. Come to me, not to what actually is related to me, but to me, all you who labour, often by things of our own making. We make many things to complicate our soul and life in our short innings on earth. But as the Lord discreetly warned us through his word at Bethany, one thing is necessary. As a young priest, one day I was sent by my prayer to Sejano. Could you do a funeral there? Off I went. And he told me how to do a funeral. You must ask before you go to the altar one or two things from the sacristan about the person because you have to say something which is in some way related to the person's life. And so I got information in a short time that the person had been for years in an irregular union and actually had died without everything being sorted out. By that time the person was quite old, but I thought to myself, what an awful pity that these people don't call us before and not after. So much can be done by the mercy of the Sacred Heart if a person has the presence of the Church in the presence of the priest, while yet lucid, to heal and wash take away the past and open wide the gates of heaven, the soul may go homeward bound where the soul was meant to be for all eternity. There's no point in doing the maximum after death if what could have been done before is deliberately, deliberately neglected.
perhaps not to put fear in the heart of the person. The priest, as it were, means death. The mentality behind that shows very little faith, supernatural faith. But it was always happening. I remember one time prior saying in chapter that you had to go and bless a dead person. That meant something had happened there. They called after and not before. I thought, what liturgical nonsense. It's true, one does one's best for the family, not to upset them, to give them all that could console them. But the important thing is they meet Christ the Saviour when they still actually are on this side of eternity. Mercy, what the Lord insisted again in our time through St. Faustina, the importance of praying at the moment of passing, the power of Divine Mercy Chaplet, we can infiltrate that mercy, we can pour down blessings, call down all the mercies while the soul is still alive, because who knows the battle that's going on in that soul, even though it might not be visible or conscious, we can't see the soul. But the Lord knows the mystery. And it is said that at that moment things actually can happen. The soul can be given while yet just about on this side of eternity some kind of knowledge of what's ahead. There the frontier is very thin. Sometimes the eyes open and they seem to be looking not at those present but at somebody perhaps beyond. Are they family members? Are they angels? Are they the Lord? Our Blessed Lady? We handle there also. We touch something beyond the veil. As we do in the sacraments, in the Catholic faith, we really are close. The intimacy is such that we cannot fathom it. And we have that consolation of having God, as it were, physically before us. It's a sacramental presence, but it's a true presence. A real presence. Our Lord makes himself personal and available because he wants what? Our love. Our love. In our time, many miracles remind us of that. Hosts which are transformed, things which are caught during adoration, Our Lady as a silhouette and so on. They're all available on YouTube because of the modern means of communication. People always have their mobile phone to snap things. But one of the interesting ones in recent times is the double miracle where the Lord really showed his love in Venezuela. He loves masses of preparation. And there was one happening at midnight on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception in 1991. A good priest was celebrating there gratuitously to make up for this kind of abuse that's around. And at the moment of fraction, a miracle happened. One half did not remain purely visible bread. It also transformed itself physically. The change had happened, of course, in the complete host. But the Lord wanted to remind us of the massive change by not allowing one half of the fraction to conceal any more of the presence. So he could not consume that part of the host. He was placed in a reliquary specially prepared for it, made for it so it could be visible and revered. And it was given to the custody of Augustinian nuns in Bethania. And one time, a few years later, a good American group was going there from the north to venerate it. And Don Sanford good man of about 40 years, went and as soon as he got there he saw that it was actually on fire! It was like the Sacred Heart. So he had the instinct to put on his camcorder, which only he had in that group, and he was taken aback because the camera caught it. He sent the footage to the bishop because he was afraid it might be some kind of hallucination, but the bishop calmly answered, Man can hallucinate. The camera 
just records what it picks up. And we can see it now. The bleeding and burning host of Bethania, Venezuela. It's on YouTube and it shows fire and love, presence and an invitation to intimacy. And so why be afraid of the Lord at death? Call the priest and let the Sacred Heart embrace the soul before as well as after. Too late, I thought, as I heard this from our prior. I must go to the depths of the country to bless a dead person. Devo andare in fondo della campagna a benedire un morto. The time is long, the distance evermore shall be between what we are and what we were yet yesterday yet yester hour that saw the sawing of all time for what did stir good soul now ere more gone to bygone age, upon a moment small that called the all to ordering and on, did stir one page that for all time is turned beyond recall. O oh, hominid, too huge to lie unknown in but a common tomb, a womb there is, no more to hide thee from the blast now shown to be the all that is. Unless it be his that sparked me, little splinter of a star, gone on to wander, wander where? Days are. There is a place where peace and mercy meet, where humankind. The rays of Godhead can in darkness greet and healing find. There is a manhood where divinity looks out to us from all eternity. O stream of light, O beam of ancient grace, given in this hour for us, for us, who in this tender face behold the power that at a time that bid the moments be, I see this case. That waited long for me. O Master, draw me close to this soft heat that melts in this, the goodness of the heart where all things meet, exempt thy bliss, and in a smile.